thank you for the kind introduction so uh, my talk uh, before i start my talk i would like to thank the organizers dr rutul and his team for giving me this opportunity so my talk is about is there any role of premixed insulin in pregnancy so uh, diabetes in general is considered as a very heterogeneous disorder and i think hyperglycemia in pregnancy is also an equally heterogeneous condition so probably one solution or one kind of insulin regimen may not fit every patient with hyperglycemia in pregnancy so in my talk i will look at two or three case studies which will be very small case studies like case snippets one study uh, which was done in india in 2019 published in 2019 which looked at the glycemic patterns during pregnancy the study of different insulin regimens on fetal maternal out and just quickly go through the guidelines what they have to talk about premixed insulin and then finally conclude so whenever we decide to choose an insulin regimen for any patient with diabetes the first thing that we look at is the glycemic pattern of that individual we can use a cgm device or probably we can also use fasting and postprandial blood glucose or the smbg levels and then we try to match the insulin pharmacokinetics with that particular glycemic pattern and prescribe the insulin that the patient requires so in addition to this uh, basic exercise of prescribing insulin in pregnancy we are also very much bothered about the fetal maternal outcomes so the first study that i would like to talk about is a two weeks glycemic profile using cgms from abbott and in done in mild gdm versus healthy gdm patients and in this in this uh, in this study there were 33 healthy pregnant women 29 gdm patients and 9 non pregnant women and they were given a 14 days cgms and lot of data points lot of data was acquired from these uh, three groups of patients so if you look at the results of this study and if you look at the postprandial excurs excursions between the healthy pregnant versus gestational diabetes we can definitely see that the postprandial in the preg uh, gestational group is slightly higher as compared to the healthy non gdm pregnant women and if you look at the other meals also that is the lunch and breakfast again as compared to healthy pregnant women in the gdm group there is a slightly higher postprandial peaks so this is the most typical glycemic pattern that we observe in patients with gestational diabetes that is rapid rapid rise in the postprandial period and usually during the interprandial period there will be euglycemia but when we look at the cgms patterns of all these women when compared to healthy pregnant women versus the gdm pregnant women then there was slight glycemic variability also that was noted in the gdm group so on one hand we have a typical pattern of sharp rise in postprandial glucose in most of the patients with gdm but at the same time we can also have lot of glycemic variability in patients who have gdm so this study concluded that glycemic variability is significantly higher among women who have gdm as compared to healthy pregnant women and this again impresses upon us that probably you cannot use a single insulin regimen for every patient with gdm now this is my first case or case snippet again a cgm of a patient who was diagnosed with gdm who was on medical nutrition therapy and we can see that again this is the typical pattern that we have observed in the previous study there is a post breakfast peak as shown by the three red arrows there is a post lunch peak and then there is a post dinner peak also if you look between lunch and dinner there is a euglycemia during the night time also up to morning there is a euglycemia or lower side blood sugar levels so this is again the most typical pattern and she was prescribed based on this if we match the insulin pharmacokinetics of the available insulin the most uh, matching insulin would be the rapid acting insulin analogs like aspart or lispro so this patient was prescribed uh, three doses of rapid acting aspart and subsequent smbg showed that she had a good control of diabetes now moving to the second case this is again a case of gestational diabetes who had 34 year old having gdm diagnosed at fifth month started on medical nutrition therapy and on follow up after 2 to 3 weeks 
we can look at her SMBG. I'm not sure if you can see, but uh, if you look at the last two lines, we can see that her fasting sugars were around 90-95. There was a post-breakfast spike, which continued to the pre-lunch spike, slightly higher sugars in the pre-lunch period. And again in the post lunch there was a spike and sub by the evening time the blood glucose started coming down. So post dinner there was not significant hyperglycemia in this particular patient. So this patient as opposed to the first case had more of daytime continuous hyperglycemia. In the first case there was sharp spikes after each meal. In the second case there is a continuous daytime hyperglycemia which subsides by the evening time. So this patient, because she has not doing well with MNT and daytime hyperglycemia, she was started on a premixed insulin analog twice, for, uh, starting with breakfast for the first time, and subsequently on SMBG, she was also started a night dose of premixed human insulin. So again, two different glycemic patterns requiring two different insulin regimens. The third case is of a pre-gestational woman who having type 2 diabetes, again a 34 year old diabetic having, uh, 34 year old lady having diabetes for 3 years and she had come for preconception and she was highly motivated, she was put on strict diet control, uh, good exercise regime and she was started on premixed insulin twice a day. This was before getting uh, pregnant and Basal bolus was also discussed at that time that we can start basal bolus right away. But at that time she declined. Then she conceived after a few months and at that time her HbA1c was 6.8. She was still on twice daily insulin. Again, basal bolus was discussed at the time of diagnosis of pregnancy. But she decided to continue with twice daily insulin. And after 8 to 10 weeks of uh, pregnancy, she came back with her SMBG. And here we can see that again this pre-gestational type 2 had lot of glycemic variability. On day 1 on the top we can see there is daytime hyperglycemia, there is a evening sharp decline. On the second day during the same uh, period of time during the daytime she had a pre-lunch hypoglycemia, the fasting sugar was normal. On the third day again she had a fasting hyperglycemia. So lot of glycemic variability was observed in this patient who was taking premixed insulin while she was pregnant around 8 to 10 weeks. So again after detailed counselling, finally she was shifted on basal bolus regimen. So probably all patients who are having pre-gestational diabetes, basal bolus and those who can afford insulin pump, that should be the choice of treatment for all patients having pre-gestational diabetes. Now, let us look at the different insulin regimes and their impact on fetal maternal outcomes. So this is very interesting study and this uh, looked at the effectiveness of different regimens on obstetric and fetal outcomes. So they had around 113 patients with type 1 and 34 patients with type 2 who had pre-gestational diabetes and uh, this was done in Spain and type 1, all of them were treated with multiple daily insulin basal bolus or insulin pump. Some of the patients having type 2, around 19 to 25 percent of patients were on premixed twice daily insulin in this particular study. And they looked at all the important fetal maternal outcomes as regards to the insulin regime. So if you look at the first outcome, that is the gestational age that was achieved in this patient, in two groups, uh, group 1 who had a good glycemic control throughout pregnancy where the A1C was less than 7% versus the other group who had a A1C slightly above 7%. So across all the insulin regimes, there was no significant dis difference as far as gestational age that was achieved was mattered. The second outcome very important was the fetal outcome that is macroscomia. Again, if you look at all the different insulin regimes, there was no difference, statistical difference between occurrence of macrosomia and the type of insulin regimen that the patient was prescribed. Again, the fetal abdominal circumference was assessed at 32 weeks and again there was no significant difference between the different insulin regimes and the birth weight was also similar across all the insulin regimes. So the point uh, that the study concluded that Different insulin therapies, if they are used in pre-gestational diabetes, 
does not seem to have an impact on obstetric or fetal outcomes. Although uh, in this study premix insulin was used, but we all know that uh, from a patient perspective, from the development of hypoglycemia, from the point of view of flexibility of insulin dose adjustment, the choice of therapy in pregestational remains a basal bolus and if possible an insulin pump. But if you look at some patients in India who might refuse to go on basal bolus, who may not be that much motivated, they may not be able to monitor so closely or frequently visit, then in such kind of patients, even if they have pregestational type 2 diabetes, not type 1, in such certain situations, after explaining all the pros and cons, we can go ahead with a premixed insulin. Now, let us look at the guidelines. The RSSTI guidelines 2022, they say, they talk more about pre-existing diabetes and they say that basal and prandial, that is basal bolus with intensified insulin regimen does uh, give the best results in patients with pre-gestational diabetes and regarding GDM, they say that insulin therapy should be used who fail on MNT, but they have not specified about the type of insulin regimen. Now, if you look at the FIGO guidelines about GDM, then they say that again if MNT fails then insulin should be used but there is no specific mention about the insulin regime. <coughs> the 2024 ADA guidelines again they say that if the patient has GDM or pre-existing diabetes insulin is preferred MDI that is multiple daily insulin or insulin pump is the most preferred or probably superior uh, insulin regimen that should be used. They do not talk about premixed insulin. If you look at the IDF guidelines, they uh, categorize the hyperglycemia. So look at the hyperglycemia. If there is predominant fasting hyperglycemia, then go for a basal insulin like NPH or Detimir. And if there is a predominant postprandial hyperglycemia, then go for rapid acting analogs. But they also mention that premixed insulins are convenient alternative and they lack the but they lack the flexibility of basal bolus regime so premixed insulin as per idf can be used in certain situations and if we go to the national guidelines from india from the government of india they clearly say that all those pregnant women having gdm with hyperglycemia not responding to mnt start human insulin premix 3070 they have also given a schedule that if the sugars are 160 we can start four units if it is up to 200, then 6 units and beyond that 8 units. And similar kind of algorithm is also there in the DIPC revised guidelines that we all have in our handbag today. And they have also in the DIPC guidelines, they have put a caveat that 3070 insulin can be used in situations where the patients are uh, from a remote place, not able to monitor. But they also mention that most of the patients who have GDM they have a sharp postprandial spike, so probably rapid acting insulin analogs should be preferred. That is what the DIPC revised guideline says. So the last study that I want to mention is that uh, looks at the two different premixed insulins that we have. One is analog versus the human premixed insulin. So there are certain situations we can where we can use 3070 insulin. So which one should we use? So this was from Professor. V. Sesia and his group and they had a good number of patients in this study by it was a randomized control trial with 160 patients in aspart group versus 150 in the 157 in the human premixed insulin group and they were all started with a fixed dose on first meal of the day that is breakfast and with up titrated as per the SMBG readings. So what this study highlighted that most of the patients eventually required twice a day insulin that should be noted so just once a day is not enough maybe enough at the time time of initiation but subsequently twice a day is required <coughs> because of its convenience premix insulin can is comparable to complex basal bolus regime which requires lot of monitoring and motivation from the patient side both the insulins as part and the human premix insulin were equally efficacious when uh, looked from the fetal outcomes point of view. So there was no difference. But the group who had by aspart, that is aspart 3070, 
they required a significantly lesser dose as compared to the premixed insulin. So at, at the end of the study, at the end of pregnancy, the total dose of in the by as part group was around 20 units per day and around 26 units in the premixed insulin. So probably those who can afford definitely we can go for a 30, 70 human premix, uh, not human premix analog for in pregnancy. So I would like to conclude that one size may not fit all patients with pregnancy and hyperglycemia. We have to sometimes look at the glycemic patterns and then take a decision about which kind of regimen should be used. But most of the patients with pregnancy and GDM, they have rapid postprandial spikes and hence we have to use rapid acting insulin analogs. All the patients with pregestational diabetes should be on, whether it is type 1 or type 2, should be on basal bolus regimen. Those who can afford pump, they should be on a pump. And premix is a decent alternative for all those patients whom, uh, who cannot afford or who are not able to monitor uh, multiple injections or who refuse to take multiple injections. So with this, I would like to thank all of you. Thank you.